now that you are expert in vortices, one vortex, one Majorana bound state in a vortex, I want to tell you something about many vortices. Because this is actually what will happen if you apply a magnetic field. It will be difficult, difficult to have just one vortex. Typically, there will be many vortices. And, and they have a certain size. And if they're far apart, then everything's OK. But if they come close together, that's not good. Because if they come close together, then I have two of these states at zero coming close together. They might couple, and then one will go up, and one will go down. And this whole protection, which relies on the fact that you have just one state at zero, is lost. And so many vortices is not, is not helpful. But there's actually an extra symmetry in this problem, which is a symmetry which you've actually already encountered, which would protect these Majorana zero modes, even if many of them come together. And that symmetry is called chiral symmetry. And this is, again, something which is known from graphene. Graphene has the same conical band structure. And if the, this, this crossing point of the conical band structure is called the Dirac point, or conical point. And if the Fermi level is exactly at this conical point, then there is a symmetry operation which relates the upper cone to the lower cone. And for somehow historical reasons, this is called chiral symmetry. And the same chiral symmetry is operative in this, uh, at the surface of the three-dimensional topological superconductor. And, and there is a fundamental difference between systems with or without chiral symmetry. Now, you've encountered situations where you only had particle hole symmetry. And as you have encountered already several times, one Majorana is good, two Majoranas is not good. Two Majoranas is like zero Majoranas because they will repel and they will disappear. And the technical term which, which we use in this context is to say that the, the quantum number which counts Majoranas can only take on the value zero or one. And in a somehow sophisticated way of saying this, we say that the quantum number is Z2, just zero or one. Now, if you also have chiral symmetry, then the quantum number is upgraded. Instead of being able to count only up to one, it can count up to any, in any integer. And so we then say that the quantum number is z. And this is just a way of saying that if you have chiral symmetry, you can have many vortices, many bound states, all coexisting without repelling. And that's actually something which, which may even be useful. And, and, uh, and perhaps just to anticipate something which I presume you will, you will learn later on, but in particular, you'll come across it many, many times if you read papers on the archive. If the quantum number is Z2, we speak of a D-class symmetry. And if the quantum number is Z, we speak of a BDI or BD1 type symmetry. Absolutely horrendous names. Ex try to explain to someone why this is D and this is BDI or BD1. They're awful names, but that's, uh, we're stuck with these names. And, and you'll hear even experimentalists talk about, yeah, my system is a BD1 system, and you're working on a D system. This is much more fun. And this will be for, I think, for, for later classes.